नमस्कार नमस्कार very 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 good evening to all the lovely viewers who are watching us and uh, this is the third uh, asian literary society confluence 2020 and uh, since morning bahut sare sessions itne interesting itne informative itne enriching hue hain now we are adding to another session and uh, this session is going to be on the art of photography and uh, with me i have some extremely great eminent uh, personalities who have uh, done so much in this area of photography and the art aspect of photography uh, one of them is uh, mr rohit suri welcome mr rohit suri uh, i'm punam kandal i'm a poet and an author and all of this has been done to me by asian literary society they have been very instrumental in wherever i am as far as the creative bit is concerned the other person is uh, lippi parida but uh, unfortunately uh, lippi has not been able to uh, come because there has been a personal emergency and uh, that is very high priority so she requested to excuse her and uh, she was kind enough to you know answer a few questions which i had sent her in the morning so while i'm talking to rohit and we are interacting i have her answers i will also be reading them out from here so we will have lippi with us in spirits okay and in the little note that she sent to me so welcome once again uh, rohit and Thank you. Uh, and uh, rohit has such an impressive cv that if i were to talk about all that he has done probably the entire time which manoj has given us of so 40 minutes would just go in talking about so much he has done you know so um i asked him that boss i mean you know please tell me ki mai what kaun sa portion bolu kaun sa nahi bolu to he said he's really humble and uh, I guess when you really are of that stature, humility does come into yourself. And he told me, Poonam, I am a self-made photographer, filmmaker, artist, and a scenographer. Just say that. So I'm saying only that. But trust me, if you ever get to see all that he has done, and I'm not talking about just nationally, even internationally, you will really be so proud. to have an opportunity to be listening to him today and rohit we'd like to make the most of this by getting as much as we can as listeners to the art of photography so thank, thank you, you for this. i will quickly to... yes okay so uh, before I, i i start my questions please let me also introduce lippi parida uh, she has given her a, a few points she like me to read uh she is an author painter and a photographer she's done her masters in international politics uh she's currently the arts and culture administrator of the asian literary society she holds a world record in um, creating the fastest musical painting which is something you know which is extraordinary i mean i didn't know something like that existed um then her paintings have been showcased at the inaugural show of the art and corridors gallery at the cabinet secretariat rashtrapati bhavan uh she is the winner of the national award make in india 2018 for her excellence in creative field her two books aaja's house and if the blue lotus sings fetched her a good value and this was donated to buy more land to orobil okay and uh, no i'm sorry it's the other way around her books uh, aaja's house and the blue lotus brought her the 2018 woman achiever award in, uh, award and her painting the monsoon melange sold for a very good sum and this sum she donated to orobil okay so she's also into a lot of social service uh she did not sit quietly even during the pandemic in the pandemic 
uh, she sold her solo paintings and the money that she got from this was used for the label, labor colonies of Chandigarh. Uh, she is the official reviewer for the Valley of Words, which is a literary festival at Dehradun. Uh, then again, a very good thing that has happened to her book, uh, If the Blue Lotus Sings, is that it got turned in, into an Odyssey dance and drama. And this has traveled all over the world. So that's Lippy for you. Uh, she's there in the little answers that she has sent me. So she will be with us on the show. Now, let's start with our guest. Rohit, tell me, what inspired you to take on photography? And when was this? So, Poonam, I was, uh, I was just hardly about 12 years old when I started getting interested in photography. I come from a family where photography was a business and it was the bread and butter of the family. My father was a, my late father was a great photographer. And uh, after his death, he died when I was hardly eight years of age. So after his death, uh, I used to visit my father's uh, studio quite often and help the family around in the business. So that was the time when I realized that, you know, I was really enjoying doing photography. And I, my early uh, introduction to photography happened nearly at the age of 11 or 12. Brilliant. So uh, at that time, it was more for the bread butter bit, uh, not so much the yeah. art aspect. Or you started, uh, you know, the art aspect yeah. also way back then? Well, I was in class six when I got introduced to it. So probably I was studying in a Roman Catholic school, English medium Roman Catholic school. And, you know, photography was quite and you know, we used to have the regular uh, groupings of the classrooms and every year and then we had the sports day and the other functions. So photography was quite in and I started contributing towards uh, the efforts in the photo photography club. We used to have a photography club. So I led the photography club for quite a few years for wow. the next four that, years. That, I that, six standard. Six standard. Yeah. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, Amazing. So that is how I got introduced to photography okay. and I have been following it since then. And uh, when I completed my class okay. 10th, you know, uh, that was in 1982. So I realized that, you know, I knew how to read, write and speak. So I said, if I am interested in photography, then I should uh, pursue photography as a, you know, profession and as a hobby both. Photography was never a profession only to me. It was also a hobby to me. Brilliant. So you were lucky that you were working on something you enjoyed. So you never really worked. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Now what Lippi says about her first uh, love with photography was that about 10 years back, uh, she was awestruck by the image of a girl holding a lotus flower, you know, with the roomy coat alongside. And this is what started her unique journey of photography. That's her answer. Okay, so now back to Rohit. Okay, from the time you started shooting, you know, as as I would say, you know, as a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old till now, have you seen any transformation in the entire industry of photography? And what is the transformation? See, the industry has moved quite a lot up you know we were in the conventional times when we used to use films and all and gradually then by the time it was 84 that the color photography came into india you know we were when i started doing photography it was the black and white era 1980 1978 it was the black and white era in 1982 as the asian games came you know then color photography also started coming back to this country and there was a boom because color films started coming and people started doing shooting uh, on color films also so there was a transition that happened by 84, 85, and then it started peaking up. Black and white uh, photography took a backstage and color was in. And then by the year 2000, you know, when the digital came, the digital took over. And now today it is uh, conventional is totally gone off. It's now a new technology, you know, where people are shooting on digital and you are shooting from your phone cameras, you're shooting from high end cameras. So photography has been continuously moving on, but the art of photography remains the same. Okay. So, I mean, you know, since you have been lucky enough to also take pictures during the black and white era, do you prefer the black and white or you like the color and justify? I wouldn't discriminate or I wouldn't say that that was not good and this is not good. I think so. everything is interesting, you know, as long as you're creating 
good images, you're creating great pictures, everything is interesting. Whether it's black and white or color, you know, we, it's all shades of life, you know. So color was all, is also a great shade of life, black and and now with digital, you can do black and white and color both. You don't have to change the film, you know. You could just go monochrome on your camera. You could go for colors on your camera. So I would say that every phase has been very interesting. It has graduated to a next level every time when new technology or innovations have come in. And people are enjoying it, you know. People are quite happy with the new technologies that have come in. You know, they're working now. And actually, post-processing of pictures has become very economical because... Initially, you had to expose a film, so you had to buy a film, then you had to go for processing, then you would go for printing. So the costs were very high. Today, you just take a picture, download it, and you know you enjoy your pictures on your laptop or your computer, you know, or your phone. So I think so. There's been quite a tremendous shift in the way how photography has improved or how it has moved on. But photography has increased. More and more people are doing photography. More and more people are creating pictures. More and more people are storing their memories. So it's been it's been a very exciting journey, I would say that. So when you love a subject, black and white or color doesn't really make a difference. It's all what is in your eyes and how you think you're going to capture that. Okay. Yeah. Now, but you know, I think uh, uh, Lippy had something different to say. She says that. I prefer the black and white because um, where the light from the texture in the scene is more compelling than the hues of the subject matter. Now, that's brilliantly written. She's also a writer. Poet. So she's written a poetry format. So she prefers uh, the black and white. And I think this is certainly a completely personal choice. Okay. So uh, why do you think, uh, you know, okay. So you've been taking pictures and, you know, you've been lucky that it has been a hobby. So you have always harbored the art side of, side of it. But why really do you think, uh, you know, originally the art was more to make sculptures and then get into paintings and maybe much later photography also became an art. So why do you think is photography an art to you as a person who's a brilliant photographer? See, I would say, you know, if you remember the the very early times when, you know, there was no painting also, there was only sculpture, people, you, the, you know, the Stone Age, you know, we were sculpting things, you know, then we started painting things, you know, forms have been changing. But the idea is that, you know, we have been trying to create and trying to, you know, set up things, you know, for the future generations to see. So today, also, when you say photography has come in, painting is uh, a little, uh, you know, people find that okay painting is uh, important but photography is also a new field that I know a lot of painters who have taken to photography these days you know they are doing okay. photography and painting together so okay. anything okay. is good okay as long as it keeps the art aspect uh, in place okay now yeah. what was it uh, yeah please no no you, you have something no no, no I okay, just so wanted to include this you know see what has been important is that lighting has played a very important role whether it was photography whether it was painting whether it was sculptures you know unless there is light you know you can't see anything so lighting was a major factor which has never changed and okay. whether you do good photography whether you make a great painting or you do a great sculpture you know you always view it in light you can't view anything in dark so lighting okay. is something which has always stayed with all these arts and lighting is the soul of any picture. You know, I would say photography is an art which is created by light. Same way in a painting also. If you don't have the shadows and the hues and the lighted areas, you will not be able to create a painting. So probably lighting has been a very important uh, journey in this entire uh, thing, you know, which has progressed these new mediums. So as time has progressed, you know, from sculpturing to painting uh, to photography, Photography also has a lot of artificial lighting which gets created and which really adds to giving some brilliant pictures. Am I right? Yes. Uh, See, yeah. I okay, so, tell you, if you look back to the old times, you know, when there were no artificial lights, people used to take pictures in the sunlight. And there were studios which never had a roof. They were open sunlight studios, you know, and uh, they would only shoot pictures early morning and early evening. In the daytime, they would process those pictures uh, because the sun would be right on the top. So sunlight has always played a you know important role in this, I would say. And artificial lights are actually to supplement that 
sunlight because you can't take sunlight inside the room. So you gradually created artificial lights. And uh, you had lamps, you were using batti ka lamps, you know, mitti ke tel ka lamp. Ek zamane mein mashal use hota tha. To kisi bhi tarikhe se roshni karne ke forms te. Abhi artificial lights a gai hai, abhi LED lights a gai hai. Bhoat compact hai, bhoat economical hai, flashlights a gai hai. So everything is growing. Every time it's, you know, the technology is doing some new, you know, good job to the existing technology. You are getting benefiting from it. So now tell me, since you have also taken pictures in the sunlight and you still do continue to take them now, uh, you know, the natural light versus these indoor studio lights, do you find any difference, preference, or do you think the output is the same? See, the... If you were to shoot the Himalayas or if you were to shoot the beach, you can't light up the beach at night. You know, you will need sunlight. So every everything has its own usage. You know, sunlight is needed for when you're working with landscapes or architecture photography. You can't light up a monument. Can you light up Taj Mahal? I have shot Taj Mahal throughout the day and I have shot Taj Mahal by night also. So many times. Now, the moonlight has a very beautiful effect on the Taj Mahal. But what you can see in the daylight, you can only see an outline of the Taj Mahal with the moonlight. So every kind of lighting is has its own place. You know, it it is it is perfect for that reason which you want to shoot. So I would say that uh, they are both good to us. You know, because the sunlight does its job in the sun, and the artificial lights do the job when we are inside. Brilliant! That's such a such a nice answer. You know, like basically uh, very very motivating to try and you know push you into uh, photography. Now, what did uh, you know? Um, Lippi have to say, she said that art to her is a very biased interpretation that makes things interesting and unique. This unique vision of the artist then gets shared through photography. And that is why she, she says that photography is a brilliant form of art. Okay. Uh, now, you just said that now we are in the digital photography age. So do you think this... Yeah, you did mention that it has added value because now the cost is much more cheaper. What else has the sharpness gotten better? Are you able to get better pictures with digital photography? How else has digital photography helped? Okay. See, I would say that with every technology advancement, you know, or with every innovation, I'm quite sure the quality improves, you know. The longevity okay. improves, or you know, you're able to create a better product because we are continuously moving towards trying to do something better. See, before this, can you imagine we were doing an interview on a Zoom call today, and uh, everybody is watching us together? Previously, if we had to have a festival like this, we would go gather up together and listen to the audience over there. Today, you're sitting in your rooms and drawing rooms. So, hasn't technology benefited? Technology has always benefited. The only thing is that how you use the technology. How human beings okay. use the technology to the better of the mankind. Technology has both the sides. So I would say if you start using it to the benefit of everybody, it's good technology. But if you start using it only to your benefit and not to the benefit of other people, then I'm sure you're not using technology in the right side. The quality has improved. The results have improved. And there is a lot more that you can do with digital now. You know, you can do some creative work. I do a lot of digital painting now with my pictures which was not possible wow. as long as it was not there. Could you elaborate on that, please? What is this? So what digital is painting digital? is like when I, when I take a photograph and I sit down on my system, I work on a Photoshop uh, or uh, any other software, whichever you are comfortable working with. So I want to create something more beautiful out of the images that I have done. So I try to digitally paint them. I use the various brushes and the various tools that are there to create something new out of that work. Now, if I had to do this before, I couldn't have done it because there was no way. If I had a photograph, I could only paint over a photograph. And then the bottom would go away. And if I didn't like something, I couldn't erase it because that was gone. If I painted on a photograph, it's gone then. So today, digital has made digital paintings are some amazing works are being done on digital paintings. There are a lot of artists who imaginate and paint on the digital platforms and they create images. Some people work on their previous images and create something new out of it. So technology anyways has been very kind to, you know, creativity. The only thing is that how you are able to use that, you know, that is where your mind comes into action or your experience comes into action or how experimental you are to trying new things comes into action. 
so this digital uh, painting has it got any takers are there people who like to purchase and put them all out of, you know in all over the world some digital art is that, yeah? design, you know it is see if you understand one thing initially paintings could be bought only by the rich why because people would like to go for renowned painters <clears throat> you know anybody yeah, who's yeah. which wants to have a painting of a certain name or a sect you know or a class today everybody has the right to put up some art that she can or the other person can buy and you know decorate his home with or his office with so digital art has really given that opportunity because it's become economical it's within budgets you can choose from a variety of work that is available and then you can get it printed framed and you can put it in your homes you know so you are not under compulsion so that what some yeah absolutely yes. so basically even the commoners can afford to have art displayed in their halls unlike what it used to be in the past where you had to pay lakhs and maybe much more you know to have those paintings up now lippi Poonam, has something to say yes pulam just Poonam. to add on a little word over here you know all human yeah, beings sure, deserve sure. some kind of you know some kind of very good ambience around them you know and you know all good paintings artworks sculptures good photographs you know they give us a very good energy you know they are the sources of energy you know feel happy when you look at them so i think so this is very important that everybody should have affordable art you know so that people can decorate their homes with more and more of art you know people can put up some things that they like in their homes so photography has in a big way helped you know people to bring back all those things into their homes which they enjoy you know so i uh, i have an answer of lippies also she also writes the same thing that digital photography has made photography very affordable and accessible to everyone today anyone can take quality pictures and can share it with friends family and also you know put it up in their own halls as uh, blown up pictures but she has one little thing you know that because of technology there is something which is known as manufactured pictures which she says is spoiling the realness of a picture you know so she says that there is, when there is a subject and you've taken a real picture of it and you'd like the realness to be portrayed in that picture today because you want to try and make it very perfect you try and touch up on it and you create and you manufacture a picture what do you have to say about this well see this is creativity also you know if somebody is doing that he has to be very creative to think and do that you know it doesn't happen just like that you have to put in your brains to do something out of uh, those old pictures you know so it's it's a way you look at it you know if you are doing something very constructive that can add value to the picture or add emotions to the picture or give it give out a larger message i don't mind doing that you know because at the end of the day all this is for the people to enjoy maybe it's very personal i think it's very very personal to everybody i don't mind you know when i put up pictures on facebook or on social media a lot of people download my pictures and i put up high resolution pictures and i'm happy to see that people are downloading them printing them and putting up in their homes somebody on the other side would say that oh this is my picture how you used it without my permission so i i own the rights of this picture it's quite it's quite different if you want to give away just give it away if you don't want to give it away keep it to yourself you know So, so but art is supposed to go to everybody. Everybody should appreciate it, and everybody should be able to put it up. Brilliant! I think that's such a great uh, thing, you know, and a great gesture. Now, you know, we are all today here because of the pandemic. We are not able to really meet up on a proper, you know, uh, offline stage, etc. Now, uh, do you think the pandemic has helped uh, one rediscover a new artist in oneself? Uh, yes. Well, what is your <laughs> Yeah. That, so you that think is the most, yes. that's the yeah, most please, interesting yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, see, I would say that the pandemic has actually helped people discover that they are all artists. We are all artists. Actually, all human beings are artists. You know, the only thing is that we don't explore ourselves in that field. You know, we no, no. I didn't go to an art college. How can I be an artist? How can I be a painter? That's wrong. You know, the pandemic actually gave people time to think about that what they could do. So finally, they started trying their skills. You know, at various things that they were good at. So a lot of people had. Everybody has a phone camera at home. They had enough time to take pictures of their children, their family. You know, and the skies were so clear. You know, because there was no pollution, so people could see these stars at night. I used to get so many calls from so many people who are doctors, chartered accountants, engineers, working in the corporate world. 
Good. Can I take some of your time and ask about my phone camera? You know, how do I get great pictures? I suddenly realized, you know, that look, the artist in them has come alive because they have the little time to think about it. They are not traveling out, but still they, they were like shooting plants. Somebody was shooting interiors of his house. Somebody was shooting, you know, those empty streets because he was in a high rise building that there is no, there are no human beings on the streets. There are only animals roaming around on the streets. Look at it. You know, the perspective changed. People who didn't have the time to talk to somebody suddenly had a very different perspective. You know, they started exploring that. Oh, why not? Why not do that? I have a great camera. I have a DSLR. I have a nice phone camera. Why can't I make small films? People made so much of small, so many small films during this time. You know, they created stories in their societies, you know, so I think so the pandemic actually helped people to rediscover that all these skill sets are there with them. The only thing is that we don't look forward to, you know, rediscovering them. So that rediscovery has happened to a lot of people. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, since you are totally self-made and you've not really taken any formal education in photography and art aspect of photography, uh, what are the, you know, coaching, uh, uh, tip, you know, uh, uh, suggestions that you could share with, you know, the viewers who are sitting in front of you in terms of, you know, how can they develop, develop and become better photographers, even if it's with a cell phone? Uh, well, some I, tips. I think so. Everybody is a good photographer. Okay. Okay. And everybody has, you see, we were born with a camera. Our eyes are a camera, you know, we, we all have been born with a camera. So when people say that I don't have a camera, I said, come on here, you God gifted you a camera. Otherwise you wouldn't have been seeing, you know, so what does a camera also do? You're, you're just using the camera as a tool, but the perspective is there. The perspective to look at things, how you look at things, how you think about things, how you want to finally record those things or you want to photograph those things. So my thought on this is very simple to myself also. It's not to everybody only, it's to me also that every time I try improving my perspective of looking at things, I want to look at things more beautifully. When you start looking at them more beautifully, you actually find them beautiful. So when I photograph the rich and the famous, or I go to the monuments, or I shoot for anybody, my objective is very clear. You know, this person is already so beautiful. How can I make him look more beautiful? This monument is already so beautiful. Why can't I make it look so different? You know, that people are amazed to see that this monument could look like this. I think so. I've shot the Taj about 50 times in my life, but I still love to go to Taj. When I was shooting for the US president, when Mr. Trump came, I was the official photographer. And, you know, there was not even a single person. Last time when Mr. Uh, Bill Clinton had come, I was, yeah, uh, Mr. Clinton, yes. I was the photographer at that point in time also. Now, the best part is, you know, Taj was the same Taj, but this time the plants, because the season was different, so the plants were much more different. It was much more greener, and the skies were uh, very clean, you know, so we had a very nice uh, sun over there. Every time you shoot with a different perspective. So I would suggest that everybody has to keep trying with their perspective. Every time you pick up your phone camera or your DSLR or whatever camera you have, try a new perspective, you know, because it's a perspective that matters in the pictures. Okay. So Lippy also kind of agrees with you over here. She says the one thing that comes to my mind when I want to give people advice is that try and take pictures from weird angles. You know, so you called it perspective. She's saying, <laughs> that again, <laughs> but we are, we are, we are on the same, we are on the same. Uh, yeah, on the same. Uh, okay. Now what I'd like to say is that, you know, there is something which you, I know, you know, being the creator of so many um, arts and photography, etc. you know, every, every piece that you have created is very dear to you. But is there something you'd like to share with us on something which has been much more closer than the others to your heart and which has given you so much amount of contentment and satisfaction some little story behind it see i'll tell you every time i shoot i'm like a baby okay and that joy of being shooting something new is always there every time i'm shooting there's a different excitement that i have so i wouldn't say that uh, there's something very dear to me every picture of mine that i have shot all those 40 years of my journey in photography has been dear to me. I wouldn't say that none of them was uh, the best. I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to change my way of looking at things. And uh, I would say to me, I think so I love all of them. And every I'm 
quite inquisitive about it that I, whenever I keep shooting more and more, I should improve. But the, my creativity should have uh, different reasons to be, you know, there. So uh, I, I, I don't think so. I, no, no, one picture which is like really dearest. Koi nahi hai, sab same. Uh, see, that's kids, you know, when I shoot with kids, you know, I think so I get the best uh, happiness, you know, and I get the best shots because they're so real, you know, that, you know, you cannot. And especially when I go to the Northeast, I, since I spend about 10 days in a month in the Northeast, I'm in Meghalaya. So, you know, those innocent kids, you know, and they play and the smiles on their faces are billion dollar smiles. So I would say that, yeah, when I shoot with young kids, and their smiles, I think so they take away my heart, you know, to say, look, they are so pure. Why can't be like them? Why can't I be smiling like them, you know? Okay, so from all the lovely pictures you've taken, there must have been one which like, you know, you gave it all and it didn't work out the way you wished it to be. Has it ever happened no, no, that's why every time you take a picture, then you think that it's been a loss. We see all the pictures in our pictures. It looks good to people, but it's also a loss. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so you have no one picture just you have given everything and you have not output the same as you were hoping for. I think so. I'm still, learning. I'm still learning to become a perfectionist. So I don't know whether that, when that day will come. But I'm striving hard to you know, try to be a better photographer every next morning you know, whenever I pick up my camera. You know, I agree with you. We're learning every day. We're learning till we are alive. So, but uh, Lippi had one interesting thing to say. She said the best picture she has ever taken is the one she took when she was standing low and aimed the foot, the camera high. She says that under the yellowish bamboo trees, the resultant effect was very unique. You know, it looked like the bamboo trees were standing and looking down upon her. So she said the whole picture was outstanding, you know, and probably her favorite. And she's saying the worst one was uh, one picture which she tried to take from the airplane. And she said because the lighting was very poor, the photograph was a disaster. So oh, she does have I'll tell you, huh? Poonam, I, <laughs> I think so. I have around 3 lakh images that I've shot from aircrafts all over the world. Okay, I, in, in fact, in the lockdown, the first day when the flights opened, I flew to Guwahati just to see the Himalayas. And the Mount Everest, you know, that was, I just went to Guwahati and flew back by the next flight back. So, okay. I think so. It, everything is interesting, you know, because the mountains were so, there was no pollution, you know, and uh, it was such a, so I think so, it, the flight started operating on the 12th. I was there on the 13th morning and I flew to Guwahati, came back by the next flight just to see the Himalayas. And the Himalayas wow. looked really beautiful and standing out. So, uh, it depends, you know, lighting plays a very important role because as she rightly said, the lighting wasn't good. So uh, she couldn't get a good picture. In photography, you also have to time up your pictures, you know, because you have to realize you have to do a lot of research. I do a lot of research before I go for my shoot. You know, there's a lot of planning that is done, you know, that, okay, what will be the weather conditions? How many, of pre -prep? How many days of pre-prep do you have for a picture? I mean, estimated. Uh, no, no, it's for a complete shoot. So what happens is, suppose I'm traveling to Europe. So I'll travel at a season, you know, when I know that, okay, it's not going to be very misty and very foggy because then I will not be able to get great sunlight pictures. Or if I'm going to the hills, I always make sure, you know, that I should go at a time also when it's cloudy also because otherwise the skies will be just blank, you know, I will not get the moods. So whatever you do, you know, you have to also plan for your pictures. You have to, whether I'm shooting indoors or outdoors, you know, when I'm shooting indoors also, so you plan, you know, what background to take, what interiors to keep up, you know, what colors to uh, go along with, you know. So photography is also a lot of planning like painting. You know that, okay, I have all these colors. I have all the brushes with me. I have all the tools with me. Now, which color to start with? What do I really want? Do I want to make a warm painting or do I want to make a, you know, a cool painting? So same way you want to have warm pictures. You want to have cooler pictures. You want to have more natural pictures. So it's quite a lot of it, you know, which is also a lot of technical part of it, you know, which as you start shooting, as you start processing your images, you understand. Okay. So uh, is there any season in particular you like to take pictures of? I mean, you know, I love autumn. 
autumn mein itna beautiful every tree is a flower you know so i don't know somehow whenever there are autumn pictures i'm odd so do you as a photographer have any favorite season of for you all the season are a great opportunities for creative exploring every season gives you a different uh, picture you know so when it is foggy it gives you a nice picture you know it's so mystical but when it is bright sunlight it gives you a lot of uh, great pictures you know everything is visible the depth you know you can see things still very far off and you know in the picture now if i so i would say that every there is a moment for pictures every time sometimes i'm shooting in the night also with the moon on the 30th you know this coming 30th is going to be a full moon and it's going to be a very special moon so i am traveling to mukteshwar i am not traveling very far just to see that if i can catch the himalayan ranges with the moon in the background you know so you have to keep moving you know you have to keep experimenting it it could be disappointing also if the clouds might come in and then you can't do anything so you you keep just experimenting and you know you are lucky you get some great pictures maybe you didn't have started a good day so you might not get great pictures okay so five things thing. yeah. yeah yeah please please now i said there's always a tomorrow if i didn't get get great shots today maybe next time i'll get it you know so you always keep your hope alive you know because that creativity is all about hope you know if you're hoping that you will become a great photographer someday i'm quite sure you'll make it but if you think no no i am not doing great pictures and you will not be motivated then you will never make one so that hope factor has to with creativity that hope has to be always there that i'll do a good job becoming a great photographer is not a great deal but making great pictures is a more important deal you know absolutely so the five things which you think are the most important for a good photograph okay five so see, things. first thing is lighting is very important for a good photograph okay yes. you should have you should have a very good idea about lighting because everything works around sunlight you know all artificial light is also created around sunlight only you know now if there were five suns right across into your eyes you wouldn't be able to see and define an image so lighting has to be in a very nice pattern you know which has shadows which defines the shape it cannot be blunt you know that you have supposedly there are six headlights of cars into your eyes you will not be able to recognize you'll be dazed so lighting plays a very important role first thing is the most important thing for any kind of good photograph is the lighting how you are using the lighting whether you are in daylight or whether you are using artificial light second is your perspective how are you looking at your subject what angle are you looking at your subject how do you see that subject what do you want to actually communicate you know the story the what you have in mind when you because you have to build up a story when you are doing a photograph that okay look i want to shoot a photograph and this photograph should look like this you know this is what i want to highlight and this is what i want to take in the background this is my foreground you know so i want to do something over here two then third thing is you know that uh, you must know how to use the technology properly because if you do not know how to use the technology you might just ruin a great shot it could be an overexposed picture or it could be a very underexposed picture or it could be a shaken picture you know so you should know technology properly fourth i think so that uh, you know that little feeling of a child should be there when you are trying to photograph you know because jab tak aapke andar wo bachcha nahi hota hai which doesn't explore you know you will never make a good photograph even if you are a master at all the other things you know that little child in you should be alive because creativity is about being like a little child you know that you are still you are still looking forward to something coming up nice you know and uh, how do i say the fifth thing you know that yes you should have plenty of time to go around so many places to be a good photographer because you need a lot of time when you travel and when you do pictures but yeah on the skill part yes okay you should respect your equipment and should care for your equipment you know most of the people don't care for their lenses they don't care for their cameras you know and uh, i feel very bad because i feel they are my tools you know so i i think so i keep my cameras in a more uh, safer way than i would even keep my purse you know so to me cameras are so important or my laptop or my computers are so important that i always look after them and i you know and that's one of the reasons you know why you don't have dust issues with your cameras my cameras don't uh, uh, go for service too fast and they they've been together for so many years i use uh, bodies which have still been working with me for last 7 8 years without giving me trouble so when you care for your equipment when you are very conscious about your equipment you don't just use it as a technology or as a tool i think so all these things together do work up to you know this is all technical reasons you know that's quite a long process but this is what 
as a regular photographer people should like people use their mobile phone cameras but you know they don't even realize that you know they put their fingertips on the lens of the mobile phone camera and then they take pictures and then the pictures are blurred and then they'll say oh my camera has gone bad my god all your parathas that your region you've pasted on your lens of the phone camera how do you expect your picture to be bright and how do you expect your picture to be sharp so you have to be careful with all these things my god you know like i think our session can go on because one is the passion that i see in you rohit it's amazing and about you know everything being a positive opportunity whether it's a gray gloomy day or it's bright sunshine day or it's the red and auburn you know colored autumns and you know the springs and the various colors you are in love with photography and therefore every chance every subject which is of interest to you you know you can make it look beautiful so i don't know uh, i'll have to uh, stop because we were allotted uh, this much time and uh, i i enjoyed the discussions and i'm leaving feeling so much more enriched and maybe i'll take better pictures and share them with you so you sure. can give me your input advice from weird angles <laughs> and new perspectives so rohit thank you so much very very enlightening and wish you all the best and i think thank your cv you. will run into a few more pages now with so many accomplishments thank you so much <laughs> thank you for this all lovely the talk guys i'm hope i hope that everybody benefits from our discussion <laughs> and they keep doing a lot of photography and make small films you know i would be very happy to see a lot of people using their little time that they have to do creative pursuits like this thank you so much thank you very much thank you so thank much you, thank you